Bueno, a, a hoy decidimos en a, apoyar este evento en, en forma de educa, educar a nuestro público de la historia, de por qué estamos aquí para organizar este evento y reconocer la fuerza y la lucha de nuestra gente en esa época de los 70 con la lucha de los campesinos de, y el movimiento de César Chávez y Dolores Huerta. Eso era en los años de los 60 y en el año 70 ocurrió que lo encarcelaron aquí en la cárcel en Salinas. Hoy estamos reconociendo ese evento y queremos poner una, un placa y conocimiento en la pared para que la, la comunidad conozca. Este, este lugar es histórico. Outside, and there's, going to be, there's an exhibit in the lobby as well for everyone to enjoy. Nancy Runyon is the president of the Alliance of Monterey Area uh, Preservation. She has a powerful presentation tonight. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today on, on this occasion. So we're very happy um, that we are we are here. And um, the old Monterey County Jail was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2004. It's not just a pretty building, but important for events that occurred here. It was found to be nationally significant for its association with Cesar Chavez. In 1970, Chavez was held in this jail for 20 days for refusing to call off a lettuce boycott. His bravery in standing up for the rights of farm workers brought international attention to the plight of farm workers. Last year, all of you, supervisors, um, voted to issue a request for proposal for adaptive reuse of the old jail. And AMAP strongly supports this and will help to find the best new use. So we're happy today to present to the county a bronze National Register plaque containing important historical facts and um, my favorite Cesar Chavez quote. Preservation of one's own culture does not require <coughs> contempt or disrespect for other cultures. AMAP hopes that whatever new use is chosen for this building, that it will include a small museum or display illustrating the important history, and that it might become part of the proposed Cesar Chavez National Park. Five sites have already been approved, four in California, one in Arizona, the gold stars on this map show these sites from San Jose to Phoenix. The black star is Salinas. So it's one of the 11 additional sites that could be approved. There are many successful examples of jails being reused for different purposes. The top is an 1884 prison, now has its houses the family division of the county court in Pennsylvania. The bottom, an 1839 prison, now an artist live, work, and exhibit space. This is the 1813 Old Salem Jail. It's now residential units, a restaurant, and a museum. A four-star hotel in Boston. Uh, the sign at the top right reads, from jail to gracious hotel. It has, even has a restaurant called The Clink. <laughs> a 12th century convent becomes an 18th century jail in France. Now it's a music school and a concert hall. An 1855 prison is now the Museum of Belize, the National Institute of Culture and History. A prison in Australia is now a conference and event space. And guess what the Workhouse Art Center used to be in Virginia. The Alliance of Monterey Area Preservation is very pleased to be presenting this plaque today, and we want to thank the many people that made this possible. 
First of all, you supervisors who voted last year for the RFP, especially Supervisor Alejo and his wonderful staff. We want to count, thank the County RMA Department and special acknowledgement to Carl Holm and Karina Bukanovich for her help facilitating this event. And everybody else who helped today, just putting up tents and tables, and I'm just amazed at how much help we've had. We just wanted to give you a plaque when you made it a great event, and we're very, we're very honored. So um, we also want to thank Mo Adam and Terry Mosin for the refreshments, Juan Martinez for his great historic display in the lobby. I hope everybody will get a chance to see that. Members of the original AHA who became AMAP, and too many more to name. And so now I'd like to introduce today's um, event chair, Sal Munoz. Thank you very much. Sal Munoz, Sal, member of the AHA and the AMAP. The old jail is the anchor building that set the architectural rhythm of the whole historical block here in Monterey County. It was built in 1931, and, and, and it has a uh, kind of eclectic or you know, different uses of different architecture motifs or styles. It has a Norman Gothic style, and it was built during the Art Deco period in Salinas. In this building, uh, we were working with Amy Sales, a historian, who helped us achieve uh, all of the, uh, the designation of the national uh, historical sites. And um, I wanted to emphasize more the architecture because of, uh, of the uniqueness uh, of, of its architecture in our area, especially in Salinas, that we need to preserve these historical sites so, so we can uh, uh, reinforce the architectural and also the cultural aspects in uh, on the uses in, here in Salinas. Um, another thing that happened in this building is about woman, uh, Miss Garcia, who was raped here in Monterey County, and and because of that. She changed, uh, uh, the laws were changed for the human rights that a woman had the, the right to defend themselves when they are, you know, late. Um, so that's another one besides just uh, uh, Mr. Cesar Chavez. This building was built, uh, was designed um, by both Quebec, uh, It was, it was designed by the San, San Francisco architecture, uh, Reed and Colbert. In addition, also three other architects um, contributed to it. And it was Belly, Box, and Cusca, which was local architects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we're honored to invite up uh, Les Chavez, grandson of Cesar Chavez, and he now works for the State of Chavez Foundation. Thank you for coming to join us here today. It's an honor to have you. Thank you, Charlo, and our members of the board for the invitation to join y'all this morning. Um, you know, as a, as a young Latino, I look at the preservation of this site, and I think it's very important. Uh, first, because too often, I think as some of you know, we don't know enough about our history. And oftentimes, the way the media portrays us, and oftentimes, the way we're uh, the media, it's not a very favorable light. So this is an important first step for us to not only remember our history, but uh, but for the uh, but for the preservation of our Latino history here in California, which is a much larger conversation. So I'm going to be very brief because I know we want to get to the celebration. But once again, I want to thank you all for your leadership on this very important uh, first step um, in preserving Latino history, um, not only here in California, but um, in the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here. Quick uh, what, like each is like a minute and a half, but there are three actual footage of national news in 1970, December 1970, 48 years ago, uh, when Ethel Kennedy came just a few yards from here um, to visit Cesar Chavez. <coughs> this happened at the time. Second video is going to be 
Coretta Scott King, the widow of the Dr. Martin Luther King, who also advocated getting Cesar Chavez out of the jail. And then the last is right on Christmas Eve, when Cesar Chavez is released. Um, and you'll see the news anchors, Walter, the legendary Walter Cronkite, um, and you will see the words of Cesar Chavez outside the jail and how he describes the jail as he is released as well. Of humor. This jail reminds me of some of the uh, 
labor camps, the, uh, the uh, plumbing doesn't work, the, uh, the it leaks when it works, it's very cold, uh, it leaks when it rains, it's very damp, lighting is very bad. I would suggest to the citizens of Monterey County to build a new jail or something straight. <laughs> Going until Salinas growers are willing to sit down and talk. In the long run, uh, no one wins. No one wins really in this long struggle. And we're not, we're not uh, contrary to public opinion. We're not uh, crazy about boycotting and striking. We much rather negotiate. And so we're inviting the Roy community uh, in the spirit of peace and the spirit of of this holiday to sit with us and to begin negotiations and to do it right away. Cesar Chavez still has to convince the California Supreme Court to keep him out of jail, but now it was a time for reunion and a holy mass of thanksgiving, and then to Delano to spend the holidays with his wife and children. Richard Feldfeld, CBS News, Salinas. Yeah, All right, well, that was our three videos. Uh, part of the, the part of the we found that we were to do it. But, uh, we have a public comment. Uh, anyone would like to speak on this item in the public? If now we can go outside and do our presentation. Um, okay, if there's a public comment, bring it back to the board. Any comments from the board of supervisors? Uh, Supervisor Phillips, a former district attorney during that time. The, the, yeah, it, uh, it, and, and he was right, and that was what led us shortly after that to start looking uh, uh, to building the new jail outdoors. So, the new jail and where it is, but uh, it is it is a, a, a complicated uh, piece of property. Uh, some of it has been added on to, and the jail sales, and it's interesting, I, I just put the historical people in touch with with uh, Ted Brown, who was the jailer uh, in charge, and he was telling me about where Mr. Chavez was housed, and he had to be housed on the first floor. Uh, because he was a civil inmate compared to the other ones. But it is a complicated piece of property to do something with. We look at it over the years. So I'm interested to see what these R RFPs have come up with and what we can conjure to come up with that, that would preserve the property uh, uh, but still be something that we can afford uh, to do with it. So Resilience. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for bringing this forward. It's certainly very appropriate to, uh, in this month of December, to memorialize the historical significance of what Chavez meant. And to uh, Andres, I just wanted to tell him that I was honored to have known uh, your, your, your grandpa, because he invited me in 1990, 27 years after his jailing here, to hand out the first uh, retirement checks to the farm workers under the Robert Kennedy Foundation. So he was excited, and I was honored that he brought me. We went over here to the armory hall. And, and we're able to hand out those to the uh, retired farm workers. So we it meant a lot to the, to the Latino, to the Chicano movement. We all that grew up in the field, I was a migrant farm worker also, understood the importance of uh, you know, seeking that dignity and you know, fair wages for, for the work of, that we provided out there. And, uh, I think he was able to do that. But more than that, I think he was able to use his nonviolent movement to say there are ways, yes, things get heated and all that, but it was a nonviolent way to, to be able to have those discussions and. And as you heard, the, the willingness for both parties to negotiate. And I keep telling you, after 30 years now, I've always tried to stress to folks, if we go together, united, growers and farm workers and community, you know, we are going to be a lot more effective to make sure that we support agriculture. Like we did a little while ago, where we have almost 800,000 acres under a Williamson Act to protect that land for agriculture. But it also means that we've got to work for the well-being of, of the farm workers that, that harvest the crops. And together we can do a lot more, I think, in the future for, for Monterey County and to set this as an example of how farm workers and, and the growers and the communities can coexist. Uh, but this is a starting thing to memorialize what he's meant to, to all the future generations. I'm glad that you were able to join us. Thank you, Supervisor Salinas, for those uh, great words. Uh, Supervisor Parker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm glad that we um, are taking the time to um, educate ourselves and, and the community about things that they may have known or, or and forgotten or may never have known about um, this building that's out front here, to have something with such historical significance you know, right here um, in our you know in our county front yard is is really a, a remarkable thing. And I it's just always very moving to 
see the footage of the of what was happening at that time. And you know, I I grew up. Um, I, I've never developed a taste for grapes because when I was little we were boycotting grapes and <laughs> then it was lettuce. Um, and it's just important that all of us do what we can to um, to promote uh, justice and and to remember the struggles that people went through. It's um, it seems like a, a pretty long time ago and it seems like um, maybe not so much of a big issue now to. Um, uh, allow people to organize and unionize and collectively bargain for um, safe working conditions and fair wages, uh, but it was a big struggle then, um, and there are still struggles uh, on these issues that, that go on today, so it's just really important that we uh, do what we can to, uh, to remember and stay committed to justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, too, really appreciate the opportunity to um, receive the presentation today. It's an opportunity for us to honor the past as we look to celebrate the future. Um, the significance of the building is important for so many reasons, Cesar Chavez uh, being here particularly. But I also think about the um, uh, looking over the side of the, the county in which I live, all of the adobes that still remain today, they could have been torn down and weren't because of people who came forward to try to preserve uh, the, the buildings because of some element of uh, the importance of historical uh, preservation. And while I have to agree with my, my uh, colleague at the end, we need to ensure that we keep this in a way that we can afford to do so. So I believe that there are some architectural geniuses out there who are going to come forward with some ideas of what we can do um, but this is a building um, that has a lot more than just a beautiful facade. It has a history that goes with it that we need to ensure we honor and celebrate. I, I feel like this is an opportunity for us to really look at so many of the resources that we have right here in Salinas that can become a draw that will bring people to our area, to this area here in Salinas, because we have so much to celebrate. It's um, a heritage that's important and rich, and we should value and preserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Adams. I just wanted to point out that I, my office placed one of these commemorative pins, which are, they don't make anymore, um, the, the Sesta Child's postal stamp and this uh, collector's item uh, release of the stamp as well. Um, that, the photographer for that photo was my good friend, uh, the late Bob Fitch, uh, renowned civil rights photojournalist who lived in Watsonville. But I wanted to just take a moment to thank the preservationists who are committed to saving these uh, pieces of history, pieces of our community. Um, this particular jail has significance to me and my family as well because when the warrant was put out for Sessa Chavez's arrest, um, community members gathered with Sessa and they walked from the UFW office in Salinas down East Alasal to West Alasal. And I have a photo in my office with my aunt Irma, who used to open and close the Watsonville UFW office. In 1970, she's walking to Sessa Chavez's right hand. My grandmother's good friend, Inocencia Cobos from Watsonville, was walking on the left. Two strong women were walking on the side of Sessa Chavez as he came to turn himself into the county jail here. And uh, for, for me, uh, I think we have a responsibility as elected officials to preserve these sacred places, these historic places for our future generations, for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. You could put a commemorative park anywhere, but it's not the same to go to those actual doorway to touch that building and to visualize what occurred um, in terms of farm worker civil rights history right here on the Central Coast. This is the only historic landmark on the Central Coast. If it's gone, it's never coming back again. So for me, I feel it's more important that we preserve these places for our future generations to remember that important history of the farm labor rights movement right here in the Salina Valley. With that, <laughs> oh, okay, one public comment. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Uh, I couldn't get it fast enough before you went into the podcast time. Uh, excuse me. Um, I don't even know how I should do this. I'm going to take my head off and no, show no respect, but kind of. Okay, yes. Sir. Uh, yeah. I just want to say thank you very much. It's a uh, long, long overdue. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, we're going to hear more yeah. public comments. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, excuse me, I'm sorry. It's just that there wasn't enough time <coughs> before you moved on. Um, so I'm Margaret Sedna I also was 
here, when, as a matter of fact, I'm, my, I'm with my father and family in one of those films, as are some of the other people that are in this room. And um, this brings back, just watching this film, it brings back a lot of very hurtful and um, you know, really heartfelt times back then. I would like to say that there are things that have changed, but there are a lot of things that have not changed and we need to move forward in the struggle. The Salinas still remains very much a, an apartheid city. And Cesar was jailed, unfortunately, here as a political prisoner in Salinas. It is very important that we do maintain that history because I, there is also there are also a lot of other people that would like to come to Salinas and share in part of that. And I thank you very much for showing that respect. Um, we need to move forward with farm workers. We see what's happening right now with immigration and some of the conditions. Just what Cesar described in that jail on that time. Those are conditions that exist in the campos at that time and still today. And so thank you very much for honoring Cesar's memory today and thank you to everybody who showed up today for this. Thank you. Anyone else? No, you have to sing words? That was the Vice President of the United Commoners. Yeah, no, thank you for um, all what you're dealing with this um, under incessant Chavez. And um, I think it's impressive looking at the, uh, the images, basically fighting for a flag. Um, so those times were very um, rough. And I mean, that, that's what it cost to Cesar Chavez to stand up and basically fight for the right of the workers to have a union. Um, before he had no one, had, no, no farm work had a, a contract, benefits. So after that, he stopped the boycott and in 72, he started, the, the, the workers started the, uh, the house strikes. But before, before that, there was no law for farm workers. That was until 75 that the union won a lot of contracts. But if we saw the, the, the images, there was the issue of uh, farm workers' rights, racism, and we still have that. Just to conclude, last year we, we won an election. The uh, mediator gave us a contract, and the company had not accepted that. And the, uh, ALRB uh, is not enforcing the contract. So the struggle is not so different, but I think that the, 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 uh, the issue is that the union won some uh, important issues in the past. This year, uh, next year is going to apply the overtime for farm workers. So the struggle continues. Thank you. Okay, everybody, thank you all for being here. What a great turnout. Don't we love Salinas? Yeah. All right. One more time. Do we love Salinas? Yeah. Hey, everybody, first of all, we have a short program because then the supervisors, we have a full session out and we got to go to. So, but we want to acknowledge some special people, first of all. First of all, we want to give it up to the Alliance of Monterey Area Preservationists. Alliance of Monterey Area Preservationists, thank you. Monterey County RMA Department, uh, Director Carl Holm, Neville Perea, Karina uh, Bokanovich. Did I get that right? Uh, Monterey County IT and Media Department, and the Molson family who's going to cater this delicious food we got waiting for us back there. The historic display by Juan Martinez in the lobby, and uh, thank to, thank, we're thankful that it's not rain yet for this special occasion. Also, James Perry of the Monterey County Historical Association, and Karina Chavez, Deputy Director of Congressman Jimmy Panetta as well. We have some special guests, but before we do that, I want to just give a chance for any supervisors to say a few words. We'll start with the legendary Simon Salinas right here. Give him a round of applause, Abel. Thank you, Chairman. I certainly uh, want to thank all of you for being here. This is very important, as you heard in our chamber, the significance of Cesar meant to many of us, and certainly this is part of the history that, that needs to be preserved. And whatever happens, certainly Cheralejo will be at the forefront of making sure that whatever comes out of this, we have a well-designed building so future generations can come and understanding the importance and the significance of what he meant 
not only for the farm workers here, but we meant to this whole country in terms of labor rights, labor issues, and trying to end discrimination, making sure that the farm workers were treated with dignity, with respect. We had a lot of issues today to talk about that. Uh, but today, we just want to celebrate and want to say thank you all for being here. Gracias. Y si se puede, gracias. Si se puede, thank you. Mary Adams, you want to say any words? Let's get it for Mary Adams, representing District 5. I just want to thank everyone for being here today. There's such a rich heritage in our community with this culture and with this beautiful building. And I think it's really right for us to have the opportunity to just stop and pay attention to the past and look to the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Phillips, your partner. Yes, Superintendent Phillips, right here, North County. I feel a little bit at home. My office, I started here the year after, uh, 1971. My office was right at the corner there uh, that we had for a lot of years. And uh, I, w I, I, I wrote it through a, a lot of the uh, lettuce strikes uh, that occurred after uh, I was here. And so uh, I would like to see us be able to do something with this building, um, but something that uh, preserves part of it. I know the other part was added on later. and. Uh, it was interesting because uh, I put the Historical Society in touch with Ted Brown, who was the lieutenant in charge at that time, and he told what a uh, what a what a nice, good inmate uh, uh, Cesar Chavez was, and how they worked with him and his people to provide food because he was a vegetarian and he needed uh, because of his fasting he needed a special diet, and they worked through it. So it's pretty interesting uh, historically. I'd like to see us do something that with the historical people that make the building what it could be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, Jane Parker, uh, District 4. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And I just want to say how much I appreciate the preservationists being with us. They're quite a persistent group. And I really recognize the value of the um, architecture here as well as the history that was made um, in this jail. So as, as a reminder of the struggle for justice, I think this building is very, very important. And I look forward to working with the preservationists. When we talked about this, what, 10 years ago or more, um, there was a commitment that we would work together to find funding to find a way to preserve uh, this building and a remembrance of the, the events that happened uh, in 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 the building and around uh, the in in Salinas, so I think uh, I I really look to I want to call on the preservationists to stick stick with us and uh, help us find a way to um, uh, finance something that will do justice to to the history and the culture and the important struggles that continue. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gene yeah. Parker. I want to invite up uh, Salinas Council Member Gloria de La Rosa to come say some words on behalf of the city of Salinas. While she's coming up here, I just want to say, I want to thank everybody that came out here today. Look around the room, look at this audience. Because one day, many years from now, we're going to look back saying, who is that group who is committed to preserving this historic jail? The only historic landmark for the former correct movement on the Central Coast. These very steps that you saw in the video that Cesar Chavez came down and spoke and described that jail. Uh, what wasn't shown in that clip is that when he got out, the first thing he said is that he was treated very well by the deputy sheriffs of Monterey County, that he was, he was treated with respect and dignity while incarcerated here for 20 years, uh, 20 days. But I was, um, I want to say though, we don't see that many years ago, that many of us in politics today, as a Latino, have a lot to thank those authority pioneers, those trailblazers who fought for civil rights, fought for more representations in local government, we're standing here today on the sacrifices and the shoulders of those giants that were here in 1970. So we have much to acknowledge to those legendary leaders who stood up for farm workers and for our communities many decades ago. So we're honored to be here with the county, but to be with the city of Salinas, also recognizing this special historic day. Thank you, Supervisor Alejo, and thank you to everyone that's here today. Um, it's a great, a great day for the city of Salinas and the county of Monterey and all of us that are here our community. I don't know about you, but I was I was holding back tears as I saw the film and just remembering the cause, La Causa. But again, um, I'm going to make it short and I want to present this to you. Um, on behalf of the entire city council, the owner, who had to leave 
to the Alliance of Monterey Area Preservationists for their commitment to educating the community about the value of recognizing, preserving, securing, and displaying Monterey County's historic access and their dedication to sharing the area's rich cultural heritage with residents and visitors. Thank you so much. This means a lot to our, to the residents. Thank you. And this is for you. So let's give them an applause for now. And, um, and this is, I guess, to um, you, Supervisor, from, from the City of Salinas for preserving the Monterey County Jail. That means a lot to us. And we look forward as residents to, wow, what's going to be the vision, right? So again, Supervisor, thank, thank you, thank you, you so very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Gloria de la Rosa. Appreciate your support. Next, we want to invite Andres, Andres Chavez, grandson and sister Chavez, to come up here once again. Give a round of applause, everybody. The next generation of Chavistas. Thank, thank you, Supervisor Alejo. And once again, thank you for your leadership on this effort uh, to preserve an important part of California history. Um, on behalf of the Cesar Chavez Foundation, the United Farm Workers, and all of us in the farm worker movement, uh, we want to thank the uh, Alliance of uh, Monterey Area Preservationists for inviting us to this very historic and special event. You know, I wasn't around 50 years ago when these events took place, as you can imagine, uh, but I remember hearing stories from my dad about him being worried that his dad was going to have to spend the holidays behind bars. He was very worried that that was going to be the first Christmas he didn't get to spend it with him. And then I also remember seeing the videos that we watched on there today. And oftentimes when we look back at history, we see that those who have been on the wrong side have always used fear, hate, and violence in an attempt to deter their opponent's cause. And that surely was the case here in Salinas when, George, when Judge Gordon Campbell uh, put an anti-boycott injunction and hauled my thought that to jail. What history also shows us is that those on the right side of history often display tremendous courage. And my thought that displayed tremendous courage when refusing to call off a boycott by simply saying and defiantly saying, boycott the hell out of them. Right. Now, you know, um, the lessons learned 50 years ago today, learned 50 years ago, nearly 50 years ago, still apply today. And I think it would be um, a real disservice to all those people who stood for justice if this plaque merely served as writing of historical facts that happened nearly 50 years ago. And so I hope that this plaque stands for more than that. It stands as a source of inspiration and as a call to action to be courageous and to always stand on the right side of the history, whether it's continuing to resist the separation of families or continuing to support farm workers' rights to organize. So I thank you all very much for, for joining us here today. Remember that in these battles, uh, we must not lose hope and we must always remember the word si se puede, but more, important, but more importantly, recognize that these words we're not just a rally cry of a movement of the 1960s and 70s, but that these words are alive and well today, and will be in the future to be that source of inspiration for all of our battles for justice and equality. So I thank you all very much, and I want to take a little bit of time to recognize uh, some farm workers who are with us. Por favor, todos los campesinos que tienen las compañías de arrigo y premier pueden levantar sus manos. Thank you very much for the peace Thank you, Andres. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Lauro Barajas, Vice President of United Farm Workers. Lauro. Hi And then after that, we'll have Chris Barrera come up, and then Francisco, and then we'll unveil the plaque. Francisco Rodriguez also. Oops. Lauro. Hey. Gracias, Andres. Um, Bueno, como estuvimos viendo, um, de que, y lo que sabemos es de que en el 70, César Chávez peleó por el boicot y por eso fue que entró a esta cárcel. Uh, pero lo que hizo César Chávez es que dejó, me hicieron una pregunta, que, ¿qué fue el resultado que dejó César Chávez? Se ganaron muchos um, triunfos con él, Pero en los últimos años hemos ganado el Heat Regulation, en donde son leyes en favor para los trabajadores del campo. Se han ganado pleitos importantes de los pesticidas, el overtime. Lo ganamos en el 2016 y va a entrar en efecto el próximo año. El año pasado, trabajadores de la compañía 
de premios salieron en huelga y Francisco es uno de ellos, está aquí con nosotros y volvieron a salir este año a los problemas que teníamos en el 70 siguen estando presentes ahorita ganamos esa elección en Premier Ferry Farms el año pasado ganamos la elección el, el, el mediador nos dio el contrato y todavía ley laboral no enforza ese contrato los trabajadores todavía están esperándolo entonces el pleito sigue la otra cosa quiero reconocer a los trabajadores desde arriba que están aquí presentes a todos ellos a la unión sin trabajadores no es unión y es importante que los trabajadores estén presentes uh, entonces me hicieron la pregunta si no hubiera existido César Chávez ¿qué hubiera pasado y qué dejó César Chávez? dejó primero una unión que sigue peleando y que vamos a seguir peleando vamos a seguir organizando está la, la, la César Chávez Foundation en donde bueno, acaba de pasar el, el hijo de Paul Chávez y está también la UFW Foundation que está haciendo trabajo aquí en Salinas y en todo el condado entonces César Chávez no murió está con nosotros y vamos a seguir para adelante ¿se puede? ¡Sí se puede! ¡Se puede! ¡Sí se puede! Gracias Okay, we want to call up uh, Chris Barrera with Lulac Council 2055. Is he here? Yes, yeah. I do. Okay. Yeah, come on back this way, sir. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here today to be a part of this special event. And thank you to the County Supervisors and the Alliance of Monterey Area Preservationists for making this possible. When we first announced today's event on our Facebook page, it was amazing to see how many lives Cedric Chavez touched locally, either directly or indirectly. Many members either marched with Cesar or had relatives who were here when Cesar was incarcerated. We are fortunate to have some of our members share personal stories about the times they met Cesar Chavez. So long after his death, Cesar Chavez continues to prove his unifying power. When I first became LULAC Council 2055 president, I worked to further the teachings of my childhood heroes. Chief among those heroes was Cedric Chavez. He was first known for championing farm workers' rights. However, his influence goes beyond the fields and his memory now embodies the fight for human rights for all. Usually a jail cell is seen as a symbol of oppression and despair. However, the fact that we are gathered here today proudly speaks to the strength of Cesar Chavez's message. Cesar's strength and leadership made this jail a symbol of hope and liberation. They tried and failed to break him when he sacrificed his freedom in the name of human rights. In these divisive times, when immigrant children are being put in, in cages and tear gas at our borders, We must strive to honor the memory of Cesar Chavez by fighting such injustices, demanding human rights for everyone. Cesar Chavez said it best, one social change begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are afraid, who are not afraid anymore. We have seen the future, and the future is ours. Thank you very much, and viva Senator Chavez. Viva! Last speaker, Francisco couldn't join it, but we have Cesar Lara for the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council. Watch your steps there, because we're real here. <laughs> Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm Cesar Lara with the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council, and uh, Francisco Rodriguez is going to be here, our Secretary Treasurer. But this is a symbolic moment for the history of Monterey County. We have a rich labor history that we all share here. But the one thing I remember that I actually had to go away to college to learn the history of the farm worker movement uh, more in depth was that Cesar Chavez said that he would never have started the United Farm Workers if it would die when he died. 
and Cesar Chavez lives among us and is part of us. Because as we continue the work that Laura Baraja said in the farm worker movement and also in the labor movement nearby, is that we need to do it. Si se puede, like our sister Dolores said, is we need to continue this fight. We face this every day with the, with the organizing we do out in the fields and, and with teachers around pesticides around schools with California's for Pesticide Reform and SAS, Safe, Act, Safe Schools. Or when we're trying to negotiate a good contract, because at the end, what, what the workers take home in buying power of farm workers has gone down since, since the 1980s. So our struggles are alive today, just like Cesar is among us today. And this is a symbolic step forward. Thank you to Luis Alejo's leadership, the rest of the Board of Supervisors, and all the community that put it together, because this is so symbolic to all the people that have died. In the farm worker movement, we have many martyrs, not just CESA. And we have to remember them, and we have to remember the livelihoods that they bring to our community, and this is a big step forward. So thank you, Luis Alejo. Thank you for, for the association that's been fighting this for years. And at the end, si se puede, am I right? Si se puede, brothers and sisters. Okay, so after the unveiling, we're gonna invite everybody for food, for the exhibit, and um, music by the legendary Noé from Teatro Campesino. Let's give Noé a round of applause. Yeah. He's been performing, playing music for decades. Yeah. We're glad honored to have you here, brother. You're a legend, también, hermano. Yes, so with that, we're gonna ask uh, Nancy, you wanna say some words before we uh, unveil? Oh, I just wanna thank everyone for coming. This means a lot to us. And we we were very proud to to be here today. It's been a it's been a quite a few difficult years, but we really appreciate all of your support. This building is a symbol of the future. So thank you very much. Thank you. We're gonna get Nancy on this side, standing next to Simone, Gloria La Rosa, and Andres. You can join us too. And then we're gonna do a countdown to unveil this uh, historic bronze plaque. Right here? Yeah. And then uh, get on this. Are you going to stand right behind you? Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> 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 Can you have 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 Can but get to Simone in the picture. Let's see how we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simone, you get this on this side where she's at. Okay, we're just going to do Still make some of the walls. Put your bag down, too. This is a photo of before. This one's only going to happen once. <laughs> there we go. Okay, everybody, let's do the countdown. On one, two, two three. three. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Thank you. Let's take a quick photo here next Thank to you so much. Stay close. Stay, let's, let's look at the cameras over here. Everybody in, yeah. See the back of somebody's head, you're wrong. Okay. If I can get everyone to look over here really quickly. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Got it? All right, one more time. Congratulations. Community effort. Yeah. 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 Yeah.